policy makers. Joining me on phone now is Dr. Julius Muya, is the PS Treasury. Thanks for making time for us, sir. And uh, let's just get straight into it. The World Bank has approved a loan for Kenya of one billion dollars. That's about 106 billion shillings during this pandemic. What are your priority expenditure areas? Well, thank you, Trevor. Um, you know, during this time, we're looking at uh, budget support uh, to make sure that we are able to fund uh, government expenditure. Uh, of course, this is uh, realizing and appreciating the fact that uh, on the onset of this pandemic, uh, government revenues have significantly gone down. And therefore, so that we can continue operating government, providing services to citizens, we need to be able to get uh, some other source of funding. So that is why we went to one of the cheapest sources of funding. And that's why we went to this World Bank alone. But where, what are your priority areas now? Where are you going to spend more in terms of priority? Well, obviously, we have um, the health uh, situation uh, regarding the... Uh, the pandemic where, first of all, we are having to uh, help people with their, uh, the mask. Uh, we are also supporting people in terms of uh, the informal settlement uh, where there are people who have fallen off the, the safety net and uh, providing some funding so that they can be able to put food on their table. Uh, we are also looking to make sure that uh, where uh, there are bills that uh, were outstanding to help small, small businesses so that they can continue uh, doing their, their, their work, uh, they will be able now to get uh, funding so that they can continue with their, with their work. Uh, obviously, government has a wide net of uh, things that uh, need to be done, and uh, we are looking to make sure that uh, we, we spend this money as wisely as possible. Uh, Trevor, remember, we started negotiating this uh, facility long way back in uh, uh, August last year. So it is something that we have been planning uh, as part of our budget support uh, for the government to make sure that uh, our funds and are, are, are coming in time, and also we are getting funds which are uh, properly priced, uh, so that we don't uh, overload the uh, cost of running business okay, and so running government. P.S. Indulge me a bit more on the informal settlement and the safety nets that you're talking about. How much are we looking to disperse per family? How many families are there? How much are you going to give them, and in what period of time? Trevor, let me start from the um, the basics. And here we are looking at um, people in the informal settlement, and we are starting with the uh, people in the informal settlement, especially in the uh, cities and towns where we have had uh, to restrict movement. And that is uh, starting with Nairobi, Mombasa, Kuala, and Kilisi, and of course uh, Mandera and Wajia. So that's the beginning point. We're looking at this passing about a thousand shillings per household per week. Uh, this has been going on for almost a month now. And um, the outcome in terms of uh, how uh, families and households have been able to cope with the pandemic and use that money to be able to put in the uh, food on the, on the table has been uh, very good. Uh, so far, we are dealing with about uh, 100,000 uh, households, and this is going to expand as we continue to uh, dig deeper and find out uh, who are these people who are not able to put food on their table. Of course, knowing that even before the pandemic, there were people who, who were having problems putting food on the table. Uh, but now with the pandemic, there are also people who previously had jobs. They don't have jobs, especially those in the uh, tourism uh, industry and related uh, sectors like hotels and then uh, logistics uh, area. So, yeah, it's, it's a wider net uh, that we are addressing ourselves. And it is evolving as we go. Okay. You've mentioned a thousand shillings per family per week. That essentially is about four thousand shillings in a month. But how long do you are you looking at giving this uh, aid to the families? How long will how sustainable is this? Uh, Trevor, your your guess and my guess are, are, are almost the same. I mean, we don't know how long this pandemic will go, and that is why we have been uh, a little bit measured in providing one thousand shillings per household per week. Uh, because we don't want to start a program that within a short time then we realize we cannot continue with. And so for us, uh, we are trying to be careful. We are also doing a survey uh, to try to understand and uh, appreciate uh, how households are coping with, with the situation. So we are combining uh, our interventions with data that we are collecting on a live basis where uh, we are using technology and surveys through our Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, to make sure that uh, we are not off the mark. 
Okay. So, and how have you been able to map out the people who are most vulnerable? Because there are some who can sustain themselves in as much as they're still in a lockdown area, but there are those who are most desperate. Uh, let, me, let me take you back to the, um, the census we did last year. That census was able to identify for us uh, the livelihood and the wealth and the, uh, the poverty levels in uh, various parts of the country. And so using that, we have been able to map out the informal settlements and appreciate which parts of the informal settlements have got the highest poverty incidence. And then down from there, then we go now at a granular level where we use the um, NGAO, the National Government uh, Administration Office uh, structure, where we go through the county commissioner, we go down the deputy county commissioner, assistant county commissioner, down to the chief, down to the... Um, uh, what you would call a, a village uh, level, kind of like a headman. And those people actually understand the people very well. They know every household, they know the people who are there. And that is now the granular level which has been able to give us information uh, going up so that then we can use that and then use technology to send money to households. Rather than send them food, we are actually partnering with Safaricom. Uh, Safaricom. And I want to thank Safaricom because they have come to our support and we are using them to be able to send money through MPESA to the household directly. Okay. So, P.S., the survey on socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 on household report says that overall about 30.5% of households were unable to pay rent on the agreed date, and 22%, that is about 3 out of 10 Kenyans, were also unable to pay rent completely on the month of April. So what is the government doing to sort of cushion the people whose income has as dwindled, and also the landlords who are looking to get money from their tenants who don't have that money? I think this is a challenge that uh, we are dealing with from very many fronts. And uh, one of the fronts that I have said is actually that 1,000 shillings per household per week. We also have the normal uh, social protection program where the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection have got um, a budget of about 8 billion shillings, uh, which is money that they have also been distributing uh, through the investor platform to the uh, households. So that should also be able to help. We are also progressively, uh, if you will notice, allowing uh, people to do um, some uh, form of little business so long as social distance is maintained. So we are, we are, we are hoping that uh, through that opening, people will be able to have some little income coming in. But also now looking at the landlord who sometimes and, um, have loans with the bank, then we have had this confirmation uh, from the central bank and the commercial bank that uh, they are going to be lenient. They will listen to people who have loans uh, so that during this pandemic, they will allow them um, to, to not, not to service all their loans as they, they would have uh, serviced them uh, without uh, pushing them too much. So again, just looking at the money side of things and making sure that we talk to as many uh, players as possible. Because if you look at it uh, in terms of the total rent that um, uh, we would be required as government to help people with, I mean, it's a number that I can't even get uh, what, what, what the market would be. And so we are looking at uh, all those different arsenals so that we can deal with this pandemic and the challenge of rent uh, at the same time. So is there any other stimulus package on the way that the government is mulling? Because we know the pay as you earn has been reduced. We know the VAT has been reduced. We know also there are tax rebates here and there. But is there any other stimulus package that the Treasury is now looking at going forward? Yes, Trevor, His Excellency has uh, directed my um, partner secretary to uh, get a team of people together to develop a what I would call an economic stimulus package uh, that is going to show up and then uh, help uh, the uh, recovery of uh, various sectors in this in this country. And this is something that um, through the leadership of my cabinet uh, secretary, we have been able to put together a package that uh, we have presented to parliament. And this uh, economic stimulus package is uh, looking at um, all the areas in the country. We, we, we're focusing on uh, the informal settlement in the urban areas where we are talking about uh, cousin Sami, the money will be availed so that the uh, youth who are in uh, the informal settlements can clean up and go work there and make the uh, informal settlement healthier.